Let me begin by sharing a story with you. A freight train conductor named Robert and an engineer named Rodney were chugging along an Indiana railway when they saw what appeared to be a puppy in the tracks. After blowing the train's whistle, the two men were stunned to realize that it was in fact a child who had wandered onto the railway tracks. Little 19-month-year-old Emily had wandered away from her mother, who was gardening in the front yard, and her baby was now sitting on the railroad tracks 160 feet behind her home, with a 6,200-ton train barreling toward her, completely unaware of the danger. That's a baby, yelled the conductor, and the engineer pulled the brake, slowing the train from 24 miles per hour to 10 miles per hour. But it wasn't enough. They wouldn't be able to stop in time. Robert, the conductor, ran out onto the catwalk next to the engine and down onto the front grill, ready to grab the child. Thankfully, Emily crawled off the rails at the last moment, but she was still too close. In desperation, father of four and Vietnam veteran Robert swung out his leg and kicked Emily down an embankment. He leaped off after her and held her until the paramedics arrived. Thanks to the quick thinking and heroic actions of the two men, little Emily only had a chipped tooth and required some stitches for her forehead. Like in this story, our young people today face a clear and present danger. It's not a physical danger though, but a spiritual one that comes from the popular culture that rejects the need for repentance and denies the hope that we have in Christ Jesus. We may not be able to stop the train of evil influences that is barreling down the tracks towards our children. But we can help push them out of the way, out of harm's way. As parents, we certainly don't want to be caught up, caught unaware of what is going on with our children, like the mother in this story. The rescue operation begins at home with parents sharing the message of Christ and living out the gospel daily for our children to see and to hear. Responsibility for forming our youth in the faith, though, does not rest only with parents. All of us have a role to play as visible signs of God's love in the world and to be actively involved in the life of the church. As in the early church which faced persecution, there is an urgency now for us to respond to call, Christ's call to boldly proclaim the gospel in our daily lives, and not just here on Sunday at Mass, which is a good thing. In our gospel reading, Mark, writing from Rome, emphasizes that Jesus instructed the disciples to take nothing with them for the journey, but a walking stick, no food, no money, not even a change of clothes. The message is that we cannot wait. The situation is too urgent for us to wait until we have everything that we would like to have to be comfortable to go out on mission. God will provide what we need. In Mark's time, quick action was needed as the Roman church was being persecuted. Mark's gospel is the shortest of the four gospels presumably because he was in a hurry to write it down so that the story of Jesus' life, death, and resurrection could be preserved and shared with others. So what are you waiting for to get involved in sharing your faith with others? As a catechist? As a cross trainer, a lector, a hospitality minister, as an altar server? Isn't it wonderful to see our altar servers back? as a minister to the sick, or a volunteer in any one of the ministries that we have at St. Paul. You might be thinking that I'm not worthy, 
but who is truly worthy? Do you feel that you lack the necessary skills and knowledge? We will train you. Are you waiting to have more time? We never have enough time, but we can always find time for things that matter. Let us reflect on whether any of these things have become obstacles to saying yes. And how did Jesus send out his disciples? Two by two. In other words, we are not lone rangers. But for those of us who still remember that old TV show, even the lone ranger did not go it alone to take on the bad guys. He had his trusted companion, Tonto, to help him. We are a community of believers, and we are stronger and more effective when we walk together in faith. In that freight train story, the conductor and engineer were able to save little Emily because they worked together. And as mothers and fathers, we can be more effective in passing our faith onto our children if both mom and dad work together to share and model the faith. Today's gospel reminds us that there is evil in this world as the 12 disciples were sent to drive out demons. And Satan delivered quite a blow to our faith communities with the pandemic. But we have an opportunity now as our churches open up more and more to rebuild what we've lost. And we pray to make our ministries stronger, even stronger than they were before. In the year 1205, at the age of just 23, St. Francis of Assisi was praying before the crucifix in the small church of St. Damien. Three times Christ on the cross came to life and told him, Francis, go and rebuild my church, which you can see is falling down. The need is urgent and there is much work to do. Let us consider how God is calling each of us to rebuild his church.